We love you and we thank you in your name. Hey, man, we worship you, Father. Just stay in that mode for a moment. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you for the scars. The one and only begotten Son could have called 12 legions of angels, but instead he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for the scars that you were willing to take, the beating, the whipping, the plugging of the beard, the thorns on your head, Jesus, give us a visual picture right now as we're meditating on those scars. Lord, that we would see you not only on the cross, but we see you before you even went to the cross. What all they did to you. And then they put you on the cross. But Lord, tonight I pray that we're not going to stay at the cross tonight. We're going to end on the resurrection because you are resurrected. You are alive. You are not dead. You did not remain on that cross, neither did you remain in that tomb. But you rose from the dead, separates Christianity from all other religions in the world. Because you rose from the dead, you are alive, and through your Spirit, you are speaking life to us. And I pray that you would do that once again tonight as you take us into the very near presence and the holy of holies, and there we worship you, and you put our life together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing our cry and hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Isn't God good? God is good all the time. Yeah, give Him praise. Give Him glory. It's biblical, actually. In fact, you know, uh, the, the Bible says that clap your hands, all you people. You know, some of we clap our hands, we just think, well, we're just clapping for them. Well, we're not really. We're, 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 we're clapping for Him. The Bible says, Psalm 47, verse 1, look it up. Clap your hands, all ye people. You know what it says next? Oh. It's actually biblical to clap your hands and shout. It is actually biblical. And we don't do it for us, for you, for each other. We do it because there was a man who gave his life for us. So give him praise tonight. Yes. Yes. He alone is worthy. He's the one who gave his life, took the scars, and, and went to the cross, went to the grave, resurrected sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for this meeting here tonight. What a Savior. What a Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, uh, tonight, if you see the screens, uh, those of you who were last night, we talked about two secret places, the first one being more on the negative side, the secret place of sin, the power of sin is in its secrecy. But we didn't remain there last night because we ended up in the second place, the second secret place, Matthew 6, verse 6, where Jesus said, when you pray, you enter into your closet, you shut the door, you pray to your Father who is in secret, your Father which seeth in secret will reward you openly. And so last night, we were in that secret place. Many made a choice to say, Lord, Take me to that secret place. Help me to establish it or renew it in my heart. Now, today and even later last night and this morning, as I was meditating, I was picturing this, and it's like the Lord was just speaking to me. Now, when we're in this secret place, what happens next? It was like the Lord was saying, let's go now to the next level. Let's go to the next step. Let's go even deeper tonight. And the Lord began to minister to my heart from the secret place as we establish this closet and we're praying. What happens in that secret place? And I want to look at that here tonight. 
Um, let's begin with the verse on the screen, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holy of holies by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which has consecrated, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh in Hebrews 10. And then um, in Matthew chapter 27, this is where we want to go here tonight. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 27, verse 50 to 52. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. Now, this is where, where Jesus was hanging on the cross. And before he died, and they, you know, they uh, put the spear in his side, but then Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. Actually, I believe they put the spear in his side after he died. But it says here in this verse, in verse uh, 50, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. And here's the part I want to get tonight. What happens when we're in that bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks did rend and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose? Now, I want to look at that verse that is underlined. And behold, this is when Jesus gave up the ghost, when he died. The veil in the temple ripped from the very top all the way to the bottom. It was opened up. And now we know what that means. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall have access into the very holy of holies. And I believe that is the next step when we establish the secret place of praying within that praying time. Through the Spirit, He is going to take us right into the Holy of Holies. And I am finding that many in the church today, believers in Jesus Christ today, we don't want to go there. Well, we want to go there, but we're not sure that we want to go there. And the reason why I believe we are scared to go there is because of what happens. Behind the veil in the presence of God, actually, let, let's, let, let, let's look at this. this. This is what happens. This is what's been happening night after night. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be what? Moved at His presence. That's why you hear us saying night after night, we're hosting the presence of God. May the Holy Spirit do His ministry because it is in the presence of God that bondages are dealt with. People are set free. In the presence of God, Egypt is a type of bondage. In the presence of the Lord, People are set free. Then Psalm 16, verse 11, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Oswald Chambers said this, It is never God's will that we should be anything less than absolutely complete in Him. And the picture I got today in the Holy of Holies, right in the presence of God, in that, in that Holy of Holies, behind the veil, behind the curtain, that's where God puts our life together. Our life can be shattered in all kinds of pieces and directions, hardships, heartaches, unsaved, or even say our, our life can be completely shattered, almost to the place of hopelessness. We say from that secret place, we go into the, say, Holy Spirit, take me behind the veil right into your presence. There the Holy Spirit puts everything together because in the presence of the Lord, the idols of Egypt are removed. He puts our life together in His presence. I believe the reason that we're scared to go there is because of what it costs us. See, when Jesus, it's easy to become a Christian because it costs us everything. That wasn't stated correctly. It's easy to become a Christian because it costs Jesus everything. You caught that, right? It's easy to become a Christian because it costs Jesus everything. It's difficult to become a disciple because it costs us everything. When I'm willing to say, Lord, get me off of the outer courts into the inner courts, what it really means is a stripping of the self-life. And that is why I don't want to go there sometimes. In fact, there was a man, an influential man in a congregation, some Years back, we were having meetings at a church, and it was one of those times where 
night after night. The first night, I think it was like Wednesday through Sunday or something like that. And the first night, it was like we didn't really know them. They didn't really know us. And we were, uh, I, you just felt like you were talking to a wall, like you didn't know that you were coming through. It was just like, like that. Are, are, are we together? You know, you wanted to just say, are we together? You didn't feel that, 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 that spirit connection. And I thought, well, we're just getting to know each other. It's okay. Second night rolled around, the same thing. Third night rolled around, the same thing. Finally, I got out to the bus. I said to the family, I said, I'm done. We're getting out of here. Let's pack up and leave. I'm done. Not a right attitude to have. And God gave me the gift of repentance. My wife said, honey, that's they need you here. And I don't say this with a judgmental attitude in any way, shape, or form. That is not the point here. But I repented for my attitude. Saturday night rolls around, and I thought, Lord, surely tonight, surely tonight, you're praying for that breakthrough night. Saturday night rolled around, and still no breakthrough. I thought, well, maybe Sunday morning. Sunday morning rolls around. We had Sunday school. I sat in the men's circle, about eight men. We sat in a circle, and the teacher opened up the class, and he said, now, before we get into the subject matter here this morning, I'd like to hear from you all, what has God been speaking to you about this week? Man, I was all ears, because I was having the same question. I was all ears. Let me just be really honest with you. Then I got really nervous because I thought, man, did I preach wrong? Or did I, did, did I say, like, just, well, let me be really honest with you. And he, he, and he stopped. Then he went on to say this, and I, I say this so respectfully. There's no ounce of judgment against this person at all. But he said this. He said, you know, message is what we've been hearing this week. And it could have been along those, these lines of, of, of the presence of God and, and just worshiping Him there and, and what happens in the presence. It's a stripping of the self-life and all of that. He said, what we've been hearing this week, he said, I'm going to be really honest with you. It scares me. It scares me. And my heart broke. And I said, now I understand. How many does that represent in the body of Christ? When it comes to go to the deep things of God and we just simply throw our life down, we say, Lord, I'm done living my life. It scares some of us. And we don't want to let him take us there because of what it will cost us. Friend, whatever it will cost us, it never compares to what it cost him. Not even close. Tonight, I believe, the Lord wants to shake us off the front porch and get us into the Holy of Holies. You know, on the outer court, this, this, this veil. If we would take time, um, I don't know if I have the reference written down. Exodus 26, I'm not going to take time to turn there. But it gives a description of the veil and the purpose of the veil. It was to separate the holy place from the most holy place. So when Jesus dies, that veil was ripped open so that we can go from the porch, if you will, from the outer courts, and we have access right into the Holy of Holies. Before this veil was ripped, it was consecrated. Only certain ones could get in where the presence of the Lord was. You know, I understand that from a salvation standpoint, but what about those of us who've been walking with the Lord for years? What does it mean for us today? Spiritually speaking, ever since that veil was ripped open by the power of God, spiritually speaking, that veil is still open today. And we have access to enter right into the Holy of Holies. But we become comfortable on the porch, on the outside. We are way more familiar with the porch life than, in, than entering into the presence of God. On the porch... We develop a form of godliness but denying the power, ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, on the porch, we give in to these habitual sins. Last night we talked about the secret sins, and, and one of the things that I didn't talk about last night, you know, there are, there are so many, there are, are, there are so many God robbers 
that we deal with and so many competitions from us even to enter the secret place or to say, Lord, take me into the Holy of Holies. And last night we talked about this, this, this sin called pornography and some statistics where, where so many, and almost no difference between the believers and the non-believers. And, you know, we, 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 we realize we have this issue, and so we, we, we try to draw up rule books to try to help this matter. You know, you could never draw up a rule book thick enough to, 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 to overcome this sin. You could never, in fact, technology, it moves so fast that a rule you make in the morning can be outdated by night. So you could never draw up a rule book thick enough to, to overcome this issue. And nowadays, you have it right in your hand. It used to be where you would, you would buy the magazines or the literature or whatever. And now, it's right in your hand. And so many people are giving in to that. Even people who profess Christianity in the church because they're powerless to let go of it. That happens on the porch. Happens on the outside. Because on the outside of the veil, that's where religious acts are performed. We become very religious. And I pray tonight that the Holy Spirit would shake our religiosity. Is that a word? Is it, honey? Okay. Oh, it is now. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes my wife is back there, and, and you know, her and I, we, we do things in signs and wonders. She's back there signing, and I'm up here wandering. I'm not making light of that passage. But I pray, you know, on, on the porch we become, we want to have all these rules and regulations and try to just act right and be right. Now, please understand my heart. I'm not, a, I'm not against setting up these guidelines and things that, that you feel you need to set up for your conduct. I, I'm not here to batch anybody tonight. What I am here to say, we need the power of the Holy Ghost in our life no matter what we draw up. And if we let those things overpower the power of the Spirit, we remain on the outside, on the porch. And God wants to shake us. You want to overcome the sin of pornography? Get into the presence of God in the Holy of Holies. And there's a power that is no match to pornography. That is what I need in my life. I say it to the glory of God. I used to dabble in that stuff. Since May of 1991, when Jesus came in that night, the power of God in me has overtaken that in my life. And I, 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 I boast in Jesus Christ, not in myself, but that power has kept me from going there. There is victory. Where is that quote again? Let me see here. Is it right before this? Oswald Chambers, it is never God's will that we should be anything, anything less than absolutely complete in Him. Do you believe that? As I worship Him, as I worship Him in the Holy of Holies, and I get behind the veil, and I worship Him, there is a power that overtakes our life that is no match to porn. It absolutely overpowers us. Yes! But on the porch, we're ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So many things happen on the porch. Oh, Isaiah, when he saw the Lord. In fact, let me read this. I wrote this down some time ago. What happens on the outer courts or on the porch is you can perform religious acts or right acts without surrender. We can perform right acts and religious acts without surrender. But in the presence of God, behind the veil, in the Holy of Holies, there's, there's no other choice but to just completely surrender and to say, Oh God, I am completely yours. I need help. Oh, in that presence is where we worship Him. Where we worship Him. Oh Lord, you know... Isaiah, when he saw the Lord, I'm just going to go through this quickly tonight. When he saw the Lord, what did he cry out? Isaiah verse 6, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. I believe here's what happens when we say, Lord, take me into the presence of God. Take me into the holy of holies. Then our life is compared to the holiness of God. 
and we see ourselves who we are in comparison to Almighty God rather than to each other. And all I can say is holy, holy, holy. And you know the beauty of what's behind the veil is the holiness of God, therefore the result of that life has no other choice but to be holy. Because the holiness of God will overtake our life in His holy presence. So there is holiness coming from our life. Are you all breathing out there? Just checking. But you think about it. God is holy. Isaiah saw it. When he saw who he was in the sight of God, he said, Oh, my lips are unclean. Man of unclean lips. Then we know the story. He was cleansed. You know, the immediate result of that is, Lord, whom shall I send? Here am I. Sent me. Isn't that wonderful? You get into the holy of holies. There's repentance. And then there's surrender to say, Lord, I'm yours. I, we can't stay the same when we're in the presence of God. Yes. We're changed from glory to glory. Am I okay with that? Yeah. We're okay with that. We're okay with that. 1 Corinthians, go there if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We want to look at another uh, passage here tonight. What happens on the porch? Here's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same things, that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, the same judgment. For it has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect point I want to make in this. This is what so easily can happen on the porch. In verse 12, Paul is addressing here about divisions among the brethren. And then in verse 12, he says, now this I say, every one of you saith, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas. What was going on here? What I believe Paul was addressing to these brethren is, some of you are following me, Paul, some of you are following Apollos. Some of you are following this person. Not wise. Not wise. You know what? If after these two weeks, we are more drawn to the preachers than we are to the throne room of God, then we have not done our job. Now, I believe in respect, I believe in honor, I believe in all of that. I believe in encouraging others, I believe, and so many of you have encouraged us, I believe in all of that. But ultimately, never follow me. Because sooner or later, I'm going to let you down. I'm going to make a mistake, and your world's going to fall apart because I made a mistake. If your world falls apart because I made a mistake, you're following me more than you are him. And that is what causes divisions among the church because we don't follow people. We ought not to. But that happens on the porch. On the outer courts, we, 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 we follow people rather than going into the holy of holies where we make him the number one of our life. A large ministry organization some years ago, the founder of that ministry was accused and some was false, some was true. I'm not here to say how much was what and where and all of that. A ministry that we were very familiar with and gotten a lot of, gleaned a lot of insights from. Biblical principles that has revolutionized our family. And through that, 
we had people come to us and say, what are you all going to do? This man did this, and this man is accused of this. What are, what are you going to do? And, I mean, their, their cage was rattled. And I, after a time or two, I was like, I wonder why people are so shook up about this whole thing. Now, in my heart, I was saddened that it happened. It was not, I felt sorry for the man and all of that. I was saddened, but I wasn't shaken because my foundation was not in that man. I remember teaching my children those years and, and, and saying, you know, this is a ministry that we've gotten great input from. But remember, we're gleaning. You know, it doesn't change the power of the biblical principles. So we're always following this above that ministry or that organization or that man. Therefore, when that man makes a mistake, our foundation is not shaken. It ought not to be. But on the porch, that's what we do. We follow people. And then relationships and odds with each other and accusations and all those things happen. Accusing of the brethren. In fact, we know who that is, the author of that. He's the accuser of the brethren. All kinds of stuff happens. It's alarming what is happening. But I believe it's because we're just sitting on the porch and not saying, Lord, take me into the Holy of Holies. We're at odds with somebody. On the porch, angle will rise up. We'll figure out a plan how to get even, if not literally, the attitude in our heart. Think about it. But in the Holy of Holies, we will do everything we can by the power of God to restore relationships. I ask us tonight, is there any relationship in my life right now that if that person would walk up to me I would somehow try to avoid that person. How is it? Sometimes I've heard stories of people in the grocery store seeing somebody in the aisle and they did everything they can to go to the other aisle, hope they never meet him or her. And then we wonder, why does the power of God not work in my life? As my son said, life is too short, God is too good for us to hold bitterness, anger, and hatred toward anyone. You know, on the porch, we come up with plans how to get even, and bitterness starts to brew and continue to brew, but when I say, Lord, take me from the secret place, take me off the porch, and get me into the Holy of Holies. In fact, let, let me just say this. Just last night, this is fresh, a brother came up to me right back here, And he was encouraging me in a lot of ways. And he was talking about the secret place and how that has changed his life. He said it's changed his life to the point where he was so at odds with a brother. And because he had established his secret place, he would literally take a picture of this brother who he was at odds with. And he took it with him to his closet to pray. And this relationship is being restored. But you know what is, in fact, that is what confirmed, one of the things that confirmed this message tonight because what really is happening there, what I, what I see happening in that is, not only did this brother establish a closet life, but while he's in this closet praying for this brother who he has a hard time getting along with, the Holy Spirit is not only keeping him in that closet, but spiritually speaking, he's in the, pre the, the Holy Spirit is taking him behind the veil, and it's breaking him. It is breaking his attitude. It is breaking his, 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 his own attitude toward that other brother. God will deal with him. God wants to deal with us in our attitudes. You know, I believe on the porch, I had this picture not long ago. It's been longer now than maybe I realize. How many of you enjoy eating popcorn? So some of you, so-so Merle, not so much, maybe off and on. 
Do you ever think about how popcorn pops? So you have this little white or yellow kernel, and it's a very, very hard shell. And so you have different ways of preparing popcorn. You can use the old, I call it the old style, with the, either the crank on the side or the little knob on top. You can use that style. And then you have microwave option. I guess that's an option. It is a option, an option, whether you like it or not. But my favorite is the stir crazy. It's the least amount of hassle, I think. You know, you plug it in and you uh, plug it into the outlet and you put the oil in there and that thing goes around. It does a lot of the work for you. You just make sure you dump it on and the right amount and all of that. But have we ever thought about how popcorn pops? So you heat up this oil and you dump a cup of popcorn, hard kernels into this hot oil. That thing goes around and around and around and around and all of a sudden pop, 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 pop. How does it happen? What is on the inside of the kernel? Is it not moisture? So you have this hard outer shell, you have this moisture on the inside, you put it into an environment. That when that heat, when it puts it into that environment of hot oil, that kernel starts to heat up. And before long, there is pressure that is being built from the inside out. And before long, when there's enough heat applied from the inside out, that moisture turns in the vapor. And when that moisture turns in the vapor, there is so much pressure that it cannot contain that hard outer shell. Therefore, it goes pop. This is not a cooking class. We're going somewhere with this. The point is this. When we are put into an environment like the Holy of Holies, then our life will be living from the inside out. On the porch, our life lives from the outside in, and we do everything we can to protect. We do everything we can to make this outer shell even harder and harder and harder, and we can't become broken because we're still hanging on. On the porch, that can happen because we're living from the outside in. But we say, Holy Spirit, we're, we're, we're going to go in tonight. We're going to go all the way. We're going to pull all the stakes. We're not holding anything back, but we're going in the holy of holies and the power of God we, because we are in an environment that the power of God will work from the inside out and will break us. Will break us. And one day I had this picture of unpopped Christians sitting on the porch, unpopped. But the next visual came like in a congregation. I, don't, I, I, I can't say where it was or how many. It was just a group of people. All of a sudden, all over that audience, people were just popping up, popping up, popping up. Pop, 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 pop. I said, yes, Lord. Popcorn Christianity. Yes. I believe tonight the Lord wants to take us off the porch, take us into the Holy of Holies, and pop us. Put our life together if it's not together. Put our life together. If our life is together, it's because He's done it. It's because He's done it. Friend, apart from Him, my life is a mess. In fact, sometimes with Him, it's too much of a mess. But by His power, I had a picture today people just entering in to the Holy of Holies. Just the glory of God just coming all over this altar, just putting all the pieces together. It's from every direction, putting all the pieces together. I don't know tonight numerous times throughout the evening we talked about relationships. I want to close with this. Some years ago, As we were going into our time of ministry with what we're doing now, 21 plus years ago, remember the church we were attending, were, it's a large church, and 
we had the support of the mission board and the leadership and all of that. One day in prayer, the Lord laid on my heart to approach the leadership to ask them if they would consider taking a vote from the congregation for their support and blessing because we wanted the entire congregation's support and blessing. They said, sure. I said, it's totally at your discernment. If you don't feel it's necessary, you don't feel it's a good thing, I'll submit to your authority. It's fine, but this is what the Lord laid on my heart, and if you don't feel it's a good idea, I'm okay with that too. They said, no, we'll do that. I don't know how they took the vote because I wasn't there to vote on it. (laughs) But they got back to me a week or two later and were very encouraging. Said, you know, out of the whole congregation, however they did the voting, they said there was only three people that had some concerns about it. Of course, I was like, man, a large congregation. I was like, hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going. This is it. I don't know, a couple days later in prayer again, the Lord began to speak to me about these three people. Now, you probably never get this carnal, but I argued with the Lord. I said, Lord, it's tough. I mean, three people out of that large congregation, I mean, they're just outvoted, don't you know, Lord? I mean, seriously, they're outvoted. Tough on them guys. Well, the Lord didn't let me get by with that. So I had to repent of that attitude. I said, Lord, so what do you want me to do? And so I went back to the leadership and I said, hey, again, I respect you. I honor you. If you don't think this is a good idea, it's okay. If you want to protect me, that's okay. But I'm just here to ask you, would you mind sharing with me who these brothers are so that I can talk to them? Because I felt in my heart that's the thing to do. They said, sure, we'd be glad to share it with you. And not only that, but we encourage you to talk to them. I said, hallelujah, even though I wasn't really excited about it. They gave me the names. I said, okay. I called one brother up. I said, hey, could we meet so-and-so night? He said, sure. We met at a restaurant across the table. And I said, brother, I have nothing to hide. You just share with me what's on your heart. And, you know, he gave me some good advice. He said, you know, you have these evangelists go out there, and, you know, they get so caught up in this, and they get so caught up in that, and then their family goes wayward and all this and all that. And he said, I, I'm just concerned about you. And, and, you know, our family was really young yet, you know, and all of that. And he said, I'm, I'm just con-. He gave me some really good advice. And I was kind of sitting there like, you know, well, thank you. You know, God bless you. I, I appreciate that. I want to receive that advice. And, and I was kind of like, you know, I, I didn't want to, like, urge him on, but I was kind of like, is that it? And then he shared some other concerns, not so much about me personally, but just about the overall picture. And I said, you know, I, I, I hear you, brother. I thank you for taking time to meet with me. Now, I said, if God would continue to lead us in this direction, could you give your blessing? He said, oh, absolutely. I don't want to stand in the way. So I left that meeting, and I was like, well, that wasn't so bad. The next person, now these are brothers I go to church with. The next brother, one Sunday after church, he came up to me and I did the same thing. I said, brother, you know, I understand you have some concerns and I'm just here to open my life. Now, I got saved in 91. This was about 98 or 99. So I was a fairly young Christian. Up to that point in my journey as a believer, I had not really had anybody talk to me like that. It was one of those up one side and down the other, and it hurt. I'll just be very, very honest with you. It hurt deeply. God gave me the grace to refrain. Man, can I be honest enough that I wanted to just inject and interrupt and tell him a thing or two about his life? But God kept me from it. I thank God to this day. He kept me from it. I thanked him for it. One of the first things I did is I said, Lord, I choose to forgive that man. Help me to look into my life, what he said. Is there anything there? If anybody speaks into your life, criticism, whatever it is, no matter how it comes, there's a, I don't have the exact reference, but there is a verse about looking into it when you receive it. I, I, I try to do that by the grace of God. Somebody speaks a word to me about something in my life, Lord, because, see, on the porch, we don't do that. 
on the porch were like, well, that can't be me. I know that's not me, and, and he's got an issue. But you let the Holy Spirit take you into the Holy of Holies, and you let him examine your own heart and let God deal with him. I have found God is much better at dealing with those people than I am. And I remember just forgiving. I said, Lord, no matter how much it hurts, I will forgive. I will forgive if it means forgiving again and again. Every chance I would get Sunday after church, I would give him, I would, I would walk up to him and I would give him a good old Jesus hug. And it was not one of those stiff arms. Like, good to see you, brother. It was not one of those. It was, it was a genuine, and it came from the heart because God put it there. Not because I was sitting on the porch, but I knew that in the, if I want the power of God to flow through me, I cannot hold that against that person. The third person came to me after church one Sunday, similar, up one side and down the other, different scenarios, and oh, it stirred up that pain again. I said, Lord, help me to learn. Forgave, tried to embrace him, encourage him. In spite of that, we felt peace about moving ahead. The night we were, or before we were, had made the final decision then, the third brother, he came up to me a few weeks after he had went up one side and down the other. He came walking up toward me after church, and can I be honest enough with you, my heart started thumping because I was like, oh boy, here we go again, oh me of little faith. But he shook my hand and he looked at me and he started speaking words of life and affirmation. And I had, I had shared something that morning at church. I think I was on the mission board at the time or something. And, 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 and he, he, he started speaking into my life. And, and, and it was one of those where my feet almost left the ground and I, I couldn't hardly stay standing. He just spoke into me. He said, you know, God has so gifted you. God has gifted you in this and in this. And in th th then this is what really put the cherry on top. He said, and the ministry God has called you I believe it's of God, and I want you to know I am behind you. And I said, wow, Lord, you must have done a why. I know you did a work in my heart, but you really did a work in his heart. The other brother I had not talked to about this. I talked to him about other things, but not about this. Until the night we were licensed, we were later ordained then. But the night we were licensed, I know how you do it in your congregation, but Afterwards, people were filing through and encouraging us, and God bless you, and we support you, and all of that. Here comes this gentleman. And I was like, boy, Lord, I don't know how this is going to go. My heart was beating. He stood right in front of me. He looked at me in the eyes. He just held my hand. And he said, I want you to know I am 100% behind you. Yes! When we say, Lord, take me behind the veil, no matter what anybody has ever done to me, and restore relationships, attitudes, wrong attitudes, people that have hurt us, there's a lot of pain in our churches today. Pain because of words that were spoken to us or guilty consciences because of words that we set to other people. And we say, oh, that shouldn't have hurt them. In fact, sometimes it's the ones closest to us that hurt us the most. Sometimes that's the way it is. But tonight, tonight, we're going to go deep. Our roots are going to go deep. Because I believe God wants to take us off the porch. He wants to take us off the porch, and He wants to take us right into the Holy of Holies, and He wants to heal hearts tonight. He wants to put lives together in a way that only He can do if we let Him. So the invitation in just a moment is this. Lord, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I'm a believer. But I've been sitting on the porch too long. My attitude, my ways, my heart. I want us to think about it tonight. How is it between me and God right now? How is it between me and my brother, my sister? Maybe I've been sitting on the porch just pondering, 
But there's bitterness, anger, and hatred in my heart toward others. But then I believe there's also those here who are saying, you know, I have, I have no bitterness, I have no anger, I have no hatred, I've worked through all that, but I've not really experienced just, Lord, take me behind the veil into your presence because it's going to cost me my life. And I want to completely and fully surrender tonight to say, oh God, I need so much power in my life to overcome this addiction, this habit, this, uh, these God robbers, these things that want my attention. But Lord, I want to prioritize my life. Take me off the porch. Change me in your presence. Can we stand together tonight?